This program is brought to you by UCKG. Addictions, drugs, sex, porn, alcohol, gambling, pills, and any substance that dominates and controls one's life can be used by evil spirits to make any human being a slave. Those who are addicted are always conflicted with guilt and with the desire to quit. But those negative forces that convince them that they are not strong enough to resist or fight back always pull them back down. The person always ends up hating themselves for what they do or what they have done. But none of these remorseful feelings are enough to cause him or her to quit. They may even stop for a while, but at the first sign of trouble, the person sees the addiction as the only way to vent their frustration and a way to deal with their problems. This vicious cycle is nothing but the work of evil spirits. They push the person into problems and offer a quick and easy way of forgetting their problems. But when the effect wears off, they are worse off than before. It is evident that addictions are a sign of the presence of negative spiritual forces. Hi everyone and welcome to the Last Heat program. We are here again to show you that it is possible to be healed from any kind of addiction. The cycle of failure, the cycle of addiction can be broken. The opposite of what specialists says. Well, for science, for medicine, the addictions that the people are going through nowadays, they are progressive, incurable, and fatal. And indeed, how many people we see daily dying from overdose, dying because of the reaction of a disease. Recently, we were helping someone who who had a huge problem and the organs stopped because of the excess of drugs in the system. Many people are dying because of addiction, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have a cure. It means that people have been trying so many things, but they haven't yet found what really works. And that's why we are here for. We are not inviting you to be admitted into a, a center, a, re a rehab, or be admitted in a place where you're going to spend learning and counseling. No, we are inviting you to solve the problem. Because if you only work against the substance, you can be out of that substance for a while. But later, the desire will still be there. And there you go back to that problem. That's why there are people that they try so hard to stop their addiction. But after one month, after two months or six months, sometimes even days, there they go again. They go back because they are working against the substance. But the substance is not your enemy. Your enemy is the spirit who is in the person bringing the desires to use the drugs. In our treatment, we have seen and showed you through these programs. Once the spirit of addiction leaves the person's body, the person is totally healed. The body rejects the substance or rejects the addiction, and that person is completely free once and for all. If you, are, if you have an addiction, I want you to stay tuned on this program to the end, because at the end we are going to be making a prayer. If possible, prepare a glass of water. We are going to be blessing the water, and when you drink, the power of God will reach you there, and He will be manifested in your life. Perhaps you have a family member who is a drug addict, You've tried everything to help this family member, but all your efforts came to nothing because all you did didn't work. You tried to put him in rehabs, didn't work. You tried to talk, you tried to involve the family, you tried counselors, you tried, you know, alternative treatments, but the drug perhaps is destroying your house. It's time to put an end on this addiction, and we have the cure for your problem. Watch now this story and see how addiction can be defeated. When I was around 14, I used to steal money out of my stepdad's wallet. And I would use this money to go hang out with my friends, to go do whatever we felt like doing at the time. When I was 15, I was using this money to, to smoke weed. From the age of 16, I spent every single day of my life high without fail. And I started smoking cigarettes. There was just a couple of days when I first started. 
but I had a cousin of mine who used to smoke a lot and because he smoked and I was with him, I started smoking a lot of cigarettes too. By the time I was 17, I was uh, involved with illegal activities. Some of my family were involved in, in growing weed and uh, selling it to people around the community and this was quite common where I was fun for people to be doing this kind of stuff. When we had no weed to smoke and we were bored, we would just smoke the leaves as well. Smoking the leaves does nothing for you whatsoever. You can smoke three kgs of leaves, nothing will happen for you. But because we were so bored, we didn't have nothing to do and it was a habit, we would smoke the leaves. I was also smoking a lot of cigarettes. I was smoking 30 grams of tobacco within two days, which is probably around about 100 smokes every day. And when I ran out of tobacco to smoke, then I would be smoking the, the butts from out of the ashtray. I would pick them up, I would pick the tobacco out of all of them and I would re-roll it into more smokes and I would smoke it from there. When I turned 18, I wanted to, to get away from the life that I was living. And I thought that my biggest problem were my addictions. I thought that this was the thing that was destroying my life the most. And so I moved to another country. When I came to Australia, I started working, but all of the money that I had, I would smoke because I was depressed and I was sad and I was lonely and I didn't know what to do with my life. And so I would just resort back to the only thing that made me happy. The only thing that could give me a little bit of peace and, and calm and not maybe think about the pathetic life that I was living. And I lived my life like this until the day I was evicted from my house and I became homeless. Even when I became homeless, I took everything that I would need to smoke in case I found somebody that had weed and I needed to smoke with them. I would take my bong, I would take my lighters, my papers, my filters, I would take matches, I would take all the utensils I would need. If they needed scissors, I had scissors. I had pipes, I had hoses, I had everything that they would need if they needed to smoke. So after becoming homeless, I found somewhere to stay. So it was an abandoned shack in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere. And I stayed there. It was a place over my head. It was better than sleeping on the streets. But it was, it was run down, full of rats. There was a pond underneath the house that mosquitoes would breed in. The house would be negative two inside of the house and it could be 24 outside. The house was cold and it was just disgusting. I was still getting little bits of money from certain places, $50 here and there, but I wouldn't use this money for anything profitable. I would use this money, I'd go buy smokes, I would buy weed. If I didn't have any weed to smoke or any cigarettes, I would continue to smoke from out of the ashtray. I would scrape the inside of the bong and the hose and I would grab all of the black stuff from inside of it and I would smoke that. Majority of that was ash. But if I could smoke ash and get high, I would smoke it. I had an opportunity after maybe three months to get my life back on track. I received my tax return and I could have used this money to change my life. But I was so hooked to my addictions that I didn't do anything profitable with it. I just wasted it. I spent at least $700 on MDMA pills. I would have bought, I can't remember if it was a quarter of an ounce or half an ounce. And then the rest of that I, I spent on cigarettes. As well as my problems with addictions, this also caused spiritual problems in my life. I used to see shadows. I used to hear footsteps behind me when I walked. I used to hear three sets of voices inside of my head. They used to have conversations to each other. They used to tell me things like kill myself, that I'd never make it. They used to bring up things from the past. They would even touch me at night when I was sleeping. I used to have these sort of problems and I needed help. This is how I found the treatment. And as I kept coming, the spiritual problems that I had started to leave. I stopped seeing shadows. I stopped hearing voices. But I got bored and I had nothing to do. I had a little bit of money on me and I just thought, you know, I go see one of my old friends again and we'll go smoke some weed. When I smoked weed again that time, the spirits that were there before they had left, they came back and I could hear them again. I could see them again. I could, I could feel their presence around me. And as, as the, the month, months went past, as you know, one day I'd stop, I wouldn't have it. Next day I'd start, I would have it. And that's when I understood that it was the weed was bringing these voices inside of my head. That, that addiction was, it was a spiritual problem. And I realized that the only way that I could have a spiritual cure is if I did the spiritual treatment. So I came to the treatment and I did the treatment properly. I, I went all out. I did everything that they told me to do, everything that I needed to do. I put my life into this treatment. So you see my life today, firstly being, I don't have these spiritual attacks that I used to have. I don't hear voices. I don't see shadows. I don't hear footsteps walking behind me. I don't feel this, this, this presence around me because it's not there no more, it's gone. And when this left my life, is when all the problems left my life as well. I don't have problems with depression. I don't have suicidal thoughts. I don't want to kill myself anymore. I'm no longer homeless. I got my life back together. I've cleaned myself up and I'm free from addictions. I used to smoke at least 100 cigarettes every day down to nothing. I used to smoke at least two ounces of weed a week by myself down to nothing. I don't do any pills like I used to. Today my life is clean. Today my life has moved forward. I'm free. 
I'm no longer uh, an addicted, homeless, pathetic man that I used to be. You know, after coming to the treatment, my life has changed. Today I'm happy. Today I, I smile, you know. I've got something to smile about because today I'm free. And as I did the treatment, my life has changed. If you do the treatment, your life will change as well, I guarantee you. If you are desperate to overcome an addiction or you are desperate because of what is happening in your family, you can give us a call right now. 0296029837. If you are calling from overseas, we are based in Australia, but if you are calling from any other country, actually you can just inbox a message on this Facebook and we are going to quickly go back, get back to you. You can be sure that what we are showing you here through these testimonies can also happen to you, regardless of what type of addiction you have. Some people are losing their lives and families to addictions of drugs, alcohol, some others is addictions for gambling. They work really hard, but the gambling is dominating them. It's like something is stronger and they promise that they will stop. And they convince you that they will stop, but they never stop. Perhaps it's you. You keep telling yourself it's going to be the last time. It's going to be the last time. And you have lost so much. Perhaps if you put it together, everything you've lost in your life so far, you could be living much better right now. But it's like a force that is stronger than you. In the urge of gaining back what you have lost, you keep gambling. Some others are not even gamble. Some people are hooked into pornography. One of the bad things of nowadays, so easy accessible. How many marriages are destroyed because of pornography? How many people struggle in their love life because they have a serious problem with pornography? They try to stop, but it keeps coming back. It dominates their mind. And they start looking at people and only thinking about what they watch. They don't want to be that kind of person, but that addiction, that spirit of addiction makes them to be such a person. If you are going through a problem like that, you find yourself hooked in a cycle. You find yourself hooked in a negative cycle that keeps putting your life downhill. You can break the cycle. You can be free from this addiction. That's why every Sunday, 3 p.m., here in our help center in Sydney and all over Asia and Oceania, we have the special treatment. The treatment to overcome, to defeat, to remove every kind of addiction from your life. In this treatment, we go and we tackle the problem. The problem is spiritual. Once the spirit of addiction is removed, the addiction goes. Well, you can't remove a spirit with physical treatments. You can't remove a spirit with counselors. You can't remove a spirit with psychologists. You can only remove the spirit with the authority of God. And that's what we do here. After the treatment, you are going to feel different because the spirit who is causing so much trouble to you is not going to be in your life anymore. Imagine, imagine that you urge for that drug. Your body asks, craves for the drug. But people are coming and leaving the treatment in the opposite way. Yeah, basically before, before I, come, I come to the church, my life was totally a mess. I usually be hanging around on the street because I leave back home to come here for a better education so that I could help my mom home and stuff like that. But being coming here, hanging around with the wrong friends, my life started to go downhill as I was hanging around with bad influence. So they usually influenced me in school and my grades them was going down. My whole, my whole life was totally a mess. I was addicted, addicted to pornography. When I said addicted, I was super addictive, if I could say it in that sense, that's how I was. And then it started to make me seeing girls in a different way, like normally, I remember one time that I was speaking to 14 girls. Imagine that, 14 girls. Every night my phone was ringing, one o'clock I would be up. That's how I was, I was like, and especially I was hanging around, as I said earlier on, with my friends and so I was always trying to prove, prove to them that, you know what, I can get a lot of girls, I can do what I want. But even though I did have those girls, 
it wasn't satisfying to me. Even I usually, even when I sleep with those girls, I will go back in the night and still watch porn. I was so addicted, so hooked into it. How my porn addiction started, it was, I remember it was back home with my cousin. I saw my cousin then was watching it. And then I went there, I went in, and I was watching it with, with them as well. And they didn't tell me, you know what, you're too young, young for this. You're not supposed to see these things, but they didn't even care. So that's how my addiction start. I start to watch it then, even when they go, I usually hide to see where they put the video so I could watch it on my own self. And that's how my addiction start. My lowest point was when I realized that I, my dad took me here for me to succeed and to help my family back home. And then my life was totally a mess. That was the lowest, lowest point of my life because I was thinking, hold on, my dad give me a better opportunity to come here and to make something happen with my life. But I was going downhill. How I hear about the health center? Basically, my dad and my stepmom usually come to the health center. No one tell me about it. It was surprisingly one Friday, I was going to my sister, and my dad told me that he's going, he's going to the church. So I said, you know what, hold on. Since I haven't gone to church for such a long time, let me just go and see how is it. Then I remember when I came, from that day, I remain and I'm still here. My addiction, it was a process before I could overcome it. The thing is, it, it wasn't, it was because I, I did enjoy it. I did still enjoy, even though I was hearing, hearing, you know, you need to change, you need to, but the truth is I was still enjoying it until that moment that I said, you know what, enough is enough. I have enough of this. I'm not gonna make this ruin my life, ruin what I came here to achieve. And that's when I say, you know what, enough is enough. A year and a half ago, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to let this ruin, ruin my life. And that's when I made that decision. It's all about a decision. Because if you don't decide, you will never stop. You will never stop if you don't really decide, you know what, I'm going to cut this from my life. I'm not going to make this ruin my life, my reputation. And that's where I decided, you know what, enough is enough. And that's when I give it up. One advice I would say, I would say to people who is addictive, addictive to porn, I would say it does, it, do, it does not hurt it. You know, whatever you watch there, it, it is a lie. It is, it is not reality because that's how I usually think when I was watching it. I have this image in my head. You know what? This is what I want to do. And when you, when I go actually in the real world, it was nothing. It was, it was nothing like that. And, it, and it's only do what is destroy your life, it make you doesn't focus because your mind is polluted with all kind of rubbish that it doesn't allow you to think proper. So these are the things that affect your life. And long as you're addicted, you will never move forward. You will always move in backwards and back, but you will not move forward. And I want to make a very special invitation for everyone who knows people or even you you who are watching us now, sorry, and I want to make a very special invitation for you who are watching us now and you have lost everything in life or you never achieved anything. I want to invite you who have nothing. You have nothing. You've worked really hard, but you lost everything you had. Or you were an addict who lost everything to this addiction. You've been a really hard-working person. You've gone through a lot in life, but you look at your life and the problems you had took everything from you. You have absolutely nothing. Actually, sometimes people don't want to be with you because you have nothing to give them. Sometimes you go to look for help and people despise you because you lost everything. 
Because they don't want, they can't take anything of you, they don't want to help you also. And because of this, nobody believes you, nobody cares for you. I want to call you for this Sunday, this coming Sunday, in all our sessions all over Asia and Oceania, we are going to have a special moment, a powerful moment to reverse the situation. You who have lost everything, you who feel like nothing, you do, who don't know what to do anymore, because it doesn't matter how much you try, you even get things, but in the same way it comes, it goes. You are tired of having nothing. Nobody else believes in you, nobody else cares for you. We care and we can help you. We care and we can help you to reverse the situation. So this coming Sunday, in all the sessions, you are going to receive this powerful prayer, this powerful advice that once put in practice, you will see the situation turning around. I was addicted to alcohol and smoking cigarettes. I was addicted for five years. Well, uh, it started as something that I will do for fun. Because for me, growing up, I had my sister, my two sisters, which they were doing well in life. As for me, at school, they were like getting good marks. They were excelling. But for me, I was just an average student. No one cared about me. Everything was just about them. So as a result, I ended up losing my confidence. So I would drink with my friends to feel good. Because when, when I was high, when I was with them, I would always feel good about myself. My confidence would be high. We can mock others. We can talk bad about this person, about that person. So that would make me to feel better about myself. Your know, things became very bad. That, that, that uh, addiction actually made things to be worse for me because I was not doing well. Even worse at school, I even failed. My life was just not going anywhere. My life, I was stuck. I was depressed. I was not happy with myself. Uh, the worst moment of my life was when I went away for the whole weekend to drink with my friends. And when I came back home on Sunday, my mom chased me away to live with my grandmother. And I stayed with my grandmother for months. My mom didn't want to see me. Uh, before coming to the treatment, I always try to change. I will say, okay, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to meet the friends anymore. I'll try to be clean. I'll stay away from them. And as a result, I will... I'll always go back to them because I didn't feel good about myself back then. I didn't have confidence that I have. So if I'm not with them, I will not feel good about myself at all. So I always thought that I need them and I need alcohol and drugs to feel better about myself. Uh, my mom invited me to the treatment and since I started the treatment, I'm free from alcohol. I don't drink anymore. I don't smoke anymore. And I've... Over the years, I've built a relationship with my mother and my sisters, and I've realized that it is not because they were born smart or something that I didn't have. It is because they put good work and hard work in their studies and everything. So I followed their example. I did well at school. Now I have a good job. I'm free. In life at times, people and situations disappoint us. Have you ever given God a chance to help you out of your sufferings? Give God the opportunity to show you that he is capable and willing to help you. Close your eyes and open your heart, because now is the moment of prayer. My Lord and my Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I come before your presence asking you, God, on behalf of these people who live in a cycle of failure. This person was told by the specialist that this problem of addiction has no healing. It's progressive and will end up killing him or her. This person heard from a specialist, there is nothing that we can do specific to heal you. We are gonna have to try this, we are gonna have to try that, we're gonna have to try this medicine, and the problem that was already bad gets worse. Specialists don't know what to do. Perhaps this person is praying with us and is hopeless, my God. Actually, after watching this program, you became the only hope this person has. But is the one that will solve the problem. You are a God who solves the problem. And there are people watching us from different parts of these continents, in, in Asia, in Oceania. And they are going through so much, they have nobody else to help them. But you, O oh God of the Bible, you are the same today. So consecrate this water. And when they drink this water, they speak. 
spirit of addiction that is dominating their mind will my God be consumed and removed from this person's life and those who were hooked who were destroyed who were dying because of an addiction your power will set them free in the name of Jesus I declare this water blessed and when you drink the power of God will come in you you can use your faith now and you can drink the water of a miracle and be free be delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ amen I'm certain that God has manifested his power in your life but you who are in the cycle of addiction. Understand something. When a person is sick, this person doesn't only call the hospital and speak to a doctor or a nurse to get some medication over the phone. When a person is unwell, the person calls for help. You know, either the person goes to the hospital or if the person is, is critical, there will be an ambulance coming to see the person and, and take the person from the house to the hospital for treatment. The same happens with the treatment against addiction. We cannot treat you just speaking to you, giving you advice and prayers. If you are tired, if you really want to see yourself free from any addiction, from any addiction, and I challenge you, if you come to the, to the help center, you do the treatment against addiction, you obey the voice, you obey what we teach, you do everything the way we say, in your life it doesn't change. I never preach the word of God again. It's impossible. If you obey, if you come and you obey, you are going to see, you are going to experience what specialists said you would never be able to experience. Perhaps you think you are doomed to failure. You are not. There is a way out. We need to remove this spirit of addiction and put in its place the spirit of life. We remove the spirit of addiction and we give you the spirit we have, the spirit of life, and then your life will be transformed. So if you have addictions or you have a family member, don't wait anymore. Stop wasting your money somewhere else. You have to attend what really works and it's free of charge. Nobody pays anything. You will come to the treatment, you want to pay a cent. You are not going to be giving injections, you are not going to be giving medicine. All that we are going to do is to remove the spirit that is causing this addiction in you or your family member. If you have a story about your addiction or your family, how addictions are destroying your family, I advise you to inbox us, tell me your story. I want to pray for you, I want to help you. But don't forget, the real help happens when you decide to say enough. Then you leave where you are and you come to attend the treatment so we can face to face help you to overcome. Have a wonderful night. Share this, this uh, video with people you know and people who are going through problems with addiction and make sure that every day you stay tuned.